Nada, to eat some street food, and joining me in this report is Kevin Riley. Yeah. Back again for Back some more eating. For more food. <laughs> <laughs> so why are we here? What makes Nada so special? Uh, most people come to see the deer. Right, the yeah. deer. Yeah, I mean they're, they're everywhere. All right? the place. Um, people come here to see Todaiji. Right. A giant Buddha inside there. Uh, and also this used to be the old capital. Right, this used to be the old capital. Now it's Tokyo, but Centuries and centuries ago, it used to be Nara. Yep. Well, there's a lot of history here. I mean, I, I go hiking around here, yeah. and you go up in the hills, there are Buddha carvings, like they're 1,200 years old, there's paintings in a cave. It's, it's just a really cool, old place. It hasn't really changed. Right, and one of the things I love about Nara is it's a very natural place. There's lots of hiking trails, there's lots of trees, lots of oh, nature yeah. around us, and lots of street food. Street food, that's what we're here for. Now you're talking. <laughs> All right, let's go. Nara is located in Japan's Kansai region, sort of between Kyoto and Osaka. The old capital area sits at the fringe of forested hills loaded with temples and shrines. The other side is urban and well settled. Todaiji with the Great Buddha is hard to miss. The path leading to it and Nara Station is where you'll find some very unique street food. Kevin and I start with this, a yaki imo or grilled sweet potato cart smoking like mad. The inside barrel is hot, loaded with sweet potatoes. This is one of Japan's most traditional street foods. The price here lists 200 yen per 100 grams, but the final price depends on the total weight served. Half a yaki imo was 250 grams or 500 yen. A little pricey, but on a cool morning like today, it's worth it. Look at that thing steaming, waiting for someone to take a bite. As we took our first bites, we were joined by some of Nara's permanent residents, the deer. This is when things got out of control. Very hot. Very hot. But this lady makes it using an old rig, which is really good. I didn't even have a proper bite and the deer was already claiming hey, ownership. Hey, hey. Deer one, humans nothing. You have to eat it fast, and not because it may get cold, the deer. They can sense food from faraway distances, and they'd do anything to eat something better than tourist trampled grass. Tactics range from flirting and nudging to all out grabbing and biting. Did you give it to the deer? No, he just took it. The taste? Sweeter than normal potato, which makes eating it grilled perfect. The skin is tough, but tasty, a little bitter from the charring, an awesome contrast to the soft sweet potato inside. By the station is Nakatani Do, a shop that specializes in the ancient art of mochi making. Really, this place needs no introduction. Mochi must be pounded when hot and speed is critical. Any cooling changes the taste and texture. The art has been passed down from ancient times, and Nakatani-san learned this speedy method from his village in Kami Kitayama in the Nara countryside. The pounders continually dip the mallets in water to keep the mochi moist and to keep it from sticking. The team moves quickly to the next step where it will be turned fast by hand to maintain good consistency throughout. You can see how stretchy it is, the mark of excellent quality mochi. Speedy slapping and pouting with fast turns is the last part. One last collision for good measure, and it's thrown into the machine where a Zuki red bean paste from Hokkaido is put in the middle of the mochi from Saga Prefecture. All ingredients are from very natural areas in Japan. 
いいんですか、えー、はい、そうです、はい、次一冊をお願いしますはい、はい、3つはい You can buy packs anytime. Three for 390 yen or one for 130 yen. Always made fresh, although after the show, the mochi is covered in kinako and handed directly to customers. It doesn't get any fresher than this. Wow, what an experience that was. That's something. Yeah, it's still warm. It is. Well, I guess that's from the pounding and the hot water they use. Now it's time to take a bite. You can see that azuki red bean paste starting to break through the soft, warm mochi. Alright, so it's green, not from green tea, not from matcha. No, it's from yomogi. Yomogi, which is mugwort. Right. It's a type of grass. Let's give it a taste. Alright,、yep. let's try it. Bottoms up. Oh!、Mm. Alright, I get、mm. chewiness to it. Mmm.、Huh? I like the kinako powder around it. Yeah, yeah. We got the bean paste inside. We got some. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bean paste, baby. The green yomogi adds the perfect bitterness to the sweet azuki bean and mochi texture. I'm glad you're living somewhere you didn't get this stuff. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> this is a must try on any visit to Nara, but Nara's got a lot more than mochi. Let's go. Let's go this way, yeah. <laughs> Kevin recommended a famous Nara food just a couple of hundred meters away. It's sushi, but it's different. This is Kakinoha sushi, and it's wrapped in a persimmon leaf. There are several shops around the station selling it. There are also several different kinds of mixed sets. The mackerel is the most famous. But Kevin settles on this. Ebi, or shrimp with saba, sake, and anago. We unboxed it to see what it came with. Since you can't eat it in the shop, this qualifies as a sort of street food, something people picnic with around Nara Park. Wrapped like birthday presents for the stomach, the eight sushi are packed in tight. Kevin takes it to the street for tasting. All right, Kakino Hazushi. Looking good. Now, it doesn't look like sushi, does it? But we pull one of these little packages out of here, we unwrap the little leaf, and oh, it's like each one's a little surprise. This one's got ebi, shrimp. That's、nice、sushi. With a little taste of the leaf, just a little bit, or a little lemony taste. Very good. Let's see what else Kevin finds. So now, um, Sticky little bird. Oh, this is、uh, anago. I think conger eel in English. Easy, cheap, filling, and delicious. Kaki no ha sushi. Back to those deer. Here's a massive drayaki dedicated to the deer for 600 yen. You'll need both hands for this monster. Deer will eat just about anything, but one street food in particular was made just for them. Kevin bought a pack for 150 yen. See, Nara's deer are quite important to the city. There are over 1,200 deer roaming freely around Nara Park, one of Japan's oldest. Deer used to be sacred. Killing one was punishable by death until 1637. But they lost their sacred status after World War II and are now designated as national treasures, protected by law. Most importantly, they're super cute, but they're still wild animals. You can buy special shika senbei or deer rice crackers nearly everywhere on the street. They drive the deer wild, so hide them or prepare to be swarmed. Kevin and I took the stash to the center of the park to see just how popular we could be with the deer society. Was this a passport to popularity with Bambi's Japanese cousins? Sure seemed like that. These guys love it, obviously. They do love it.、Yeah. Uh, he's like, who give me some? We had only a few deer in our area, so we decided to take our Shika Senbei to the center, where there were dozens of deer just hanging out. Certainly, our new friends there would follow us, right? We have Shika Senbei. And then again, maybe not. They weren't impressed. We weren't instant celebrities, but with a little time and high profiling those deer rice crackers, anyone can eventually be a star in the deer world. We had high society talking about us in no time. But popularity lasts only as long as those senbei. 
When you're out, you're out. Kevin retired first, but I wasn't ready to take on a solo act. No, get away from me! This one is violent! This one is violent! One deer turned into a stalker. Okay. If I give this one, this one gets angry. It's gonna hit me. Look, it almost hit me again. Look, he's, he's getting angry. This one is really not nice. He wants to. Then the party was over. That would be. With our high society days over, we turn to a lower class of food. This is shikanofun, or, yeah, you know, deer poop. It's not real deer poop. Nada is still the Kansai region after all, and Kansai is famous for having an amazing sense of humor. Depends what one you're eating. <laughs> okay. Ooh, that comes with the <laughs> I feel like a deer just pooped in my hand, but... The taste? Chocolate peanuts. Not bad, not bad at all. Do you want to compare this to the real thing? Can you tell the difference? Come on, remember your sense of humor. The deer, well, that's a different story. He found our samples very easily without touching any of the real poop. Most impressive. <laughs> oh boy, we ate a lot, didn't we? Oh yeah. All kinds of different stuff, huh? Absolutely. What I think makes this place really different is that it's, uh, these street food stands are located in different parts around the city. They're not located in one place. There's one by Todaiji, there's one out by the station, there's another one on the other side of the park. That makes this place... Uh, you get your exercise, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. You're definitely going to be working off that food that you eat. Yeah. And I see that. I mean, there's a lot of nice stuff to see in Nara. You know, there's, yeah. all, there's the deer, of course, and the all the sights and things. So. The nature around us. Yeah. So. So you get to walk around and then eat food. Eat food. Speaking of which, we're not done. There's one more I want to show you. I think I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, let's go. No street food episode is complete without a trip to the ice cream stand. They had all sorts of flavors, green tea, sakura, chestnut, and a bunch of other mixes. So there you have it, street food in Nara. Come hungry and be prepared to share with new four-legged friends. You're gonna love it. Next time, I'll be on the road for a month traveling from Kyushu to Hokkaido following those cherry blossoms, a route I did back in 2003. I'm going to share the adventure, so subscribe. Make sure you click that notification button for updates and look for live streams and loads of new episodes as I make my way north on an adventure of a lifetime. Thank you so much for the support, everyone, and see you on the road. If you liked it, hit that subscribe button and watch another one of Only in Japan's shows. See you next time. Mata ne.